Welcome to Field Sports Britain. Coming up, Simon Barr, UK Realtree Pro Staffer, is learning how to protect his pheasants from foxes. We're off to Ireland to the Burcastle Game Fair, where terrier work may be becoming a new Olympic sport. First, if you ever get the call up and you want to know what to do, here is the definitive guide to driven grouse. There's winged game and then there's winged game and then there's driven grouse. It's expensive, it's exclusive, but with good reason. Thousands of man-hours go into creating a habitat that will allow these ground-nesting stinger missiles to flourish, and someone has to pay for it. Today we join a family and friend day shoot in Yorkshire, where on Bransdale Moor and our guests of the Wilkinson family. Their estate and their shoot is managed by William Powell Sporting. Because we are involved 365 days a year at Bransdale and on our other moors, we therefore have such a tremendous involvement, we make sure that every single day does live up to its expectations. Mark Osborne from William Powell is the man who will be guiding us through the day, explaining the do's and don'ts, but etiquette, no tittering in the back row, and why grouse is flying royalty. They are really the most extraordinary birds. You get grouse mid-September probably, as soon as they see you lift your gun they flare away up so that where you've shot is not where the grouse are. Really amazing, an amazing bird, marvellous. Before a hard day's shooting, there is a hearty breakfast to be had at the recently refurbished Stonely Woods Manor. This amazing building has been fitted out in preparation for shooting parties to come and have a ball, on the moor and off it. There are nine bedrooms with day rooms and dining rooms, all with spectacular views across the great British countryside. The moor itself is less than 10 minutes away, delving deeper into an uninterrupted moorland landscape. It truly is a privilege to be here. There are nine guns today and five drives where the birds come at you at eye level. For this one we're letting Mark get his eye in before we start badgering him about how one does things. Mark shoots four birds. The end of the line does not often deliver the best shooting, but he has done well. Dogs and beaters make sure that all the grouse on the ground are accounted for. The second drive is a bit more exposed and we should be able to see the birds coming at us from a distance. Mark is now in butt three. Mark has a chance to talk us through the setup. The action can be fast and furious. Safety is the number one concern. The first thing I do is to look around me to see the topography, the line of the butts on either side and the good shooting angle in front of me and then behind. The gun comes out of the sling, we put the gun on the front of the butt with two cartridges in the gun so that we're ready because we're live at any time, everybody's in their butts so we can shoot whenever it's safe and the grouse are coming. We then get our butt sticks. And our buck sticks are positioned by the gun rather than by the loader and these are a frame that makes sure that we cannot shoot into the butts on either side. So I look to see where is a safe place to shoot and it's to stop there so the buck stick has a window there which prevents us from shooting through into the butt on that side and then we take the other butt stick out to do the same on the other side. We've got some flankers right up on the ridge there. They're probably out of shot, but just to be careful, we'll put a walking stick in front so there's no chance of us just peppering a flanker either. The flankers are flagmen running outside from the end butts, butt number one, 
and buck number eight on either end. And they're to keep the grass coming in as the drive comes in. Once the beaters get to a white marker in front of the guns, a horn blows, telling the guns they can now only shoot birds behind to the rear of the butt. The beaters can then come right up to the guns. A second horn means the end of the drive and the birds can be picked. The guns should also use this disc to mark where the birds have fallen. Time for a quick break and an opportunity for us to speak to the man who is shouldering a lot of the pressure today, the head gamekeeper. For him, this shoot is the culmination of not months but years of work. Uh, I mean, this is the, 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 the first big moor that I've been a head keeper on. I was a head keeper on a small moor, moor in Scotland. Uh, so coming here, this is the, the first moor that I can really put my mark on uh, and want to smash all records uh, on Bransdale. So the record was 4,200 brace for the season. And I mean, we'd, we'd, want to, we'd want to get it to six. Very disappointed if we didn't get it to six. Uh, and also the day record, although because it's a wet moor, getting a team that's willing to pay for 500 brace of grouse could be quite difficult. Uh, so that's maybe not a, a, as realistic a, a, a goal, but certainly the, the season record is the one we want to go for. Love your job? Yeah, I love it, yeah. You have to, you wouldn't do it if you didn't. Once fed and watered, there is more sport to be had. For this third drive, we join one of the best game shots in the world, Simon Ward. Simon used to compete very successfully on the clay circuit, but now concentrates on teaching sporting guns how to deal with a bird flying at just above ground level at 65 miles per hour. So as we have him cornered, it would be rude not to ask him for a few pearls of wisdom. First of all it would be safety and then the second major major tip would be learn to mount the gun accurately onto a moving object. Um, in this situation you've got the grouse coming at eye level and if you tend to stand too upright and mount the gun in, with your head up in that position like so you'll be looking at the grouse but the bowels will be beneath your eye. So the idea is, is with anything at your eye level or below you, you bring your head forwards so your balance comes over your front foot and as, as you mount the gun onto the bird the gun comes up to the cheek naturally and as a consequence your, uh, your lead eye your lead eye, I'm a left hander so my lead eye, my left eye is in effect the back side if I stand with my stand too upright with my head up my eye will be in this position and as a consequence I'll be looking at the grouse up here but the barrel will be beneath my eye, so I'll tend to shoot low. So if you start with your head a little bit further forwards, nose over your toes, and then uh, bring the gun up naturally to the eye, now the gun will shoot where I look. We don't get much shooting, but what does fly past does not need a second barrel. Lunch means a three-course meal in this wonderful carriage. Life is good, and so is the food. And so is the shooting. For the penultimate drive, again we join Simon. This is the drive we've been waiting for. With the weather cooling, the birds are flying really fast. Nothing gets past Simon. I'm sure you can see from the film, it was all fairly, uh, fairly exciting stuff from the grass whizzing around left, right and centre. And, uh, a few nice cubbies coming through where well, you had to pick pick the right bird and set yourself up for a left and right and one or two tricky ones out of the back so uh, now that was you've seen it in its uh, in the flesh there um, that's driven grouse shooting in all its glory 
For the last drive, we are really pushing the boat out. There's a chance of using a fourth barrel, sort of. Mark is shooting a pair of William Powell Zenith side-by-sides. Why is it important to have good guns when you are grouse shooting? To me, it's lovely to shoot with a traditional gun side by side. The design of these guns is based on Holland and Holland action, and it hasn't changed for about 100 years. So that actual design of that action is nearly 100 years old, and Holland and Hollands are still made today exactly like that. And um, there's something really inherently wonderful about shooting with that sort of traditional gun in this very traditional environment. If there were a place where these deserve an outing, it's here. And Mark believes that a side-by-side -side is actually better suited to grouse. When you're shooting high pheasants or high partridges, having that tremendous uh, balance of an over and under which goes on a single plane and doesn't flick about is a great advantage. When you're shooting a bird which is zinc jinking right to left and then backwards and forwards like a grouse will do, having a gun that you can put into your shoulder and move it very quickly, the side by side is that gun and is probably an advantage. It's been a fabulous day and we have bagged 102 brace. Grouse shooting is deep-seated in the fabric of this country. It's a high-octane sport that brings so many added benefits from conservation to cash for rural communities and there's a super social side whether you are a gun or a beater. If you want to book some grouse shooting or would just like to find out more about the estates managed by William Powell, go to williampowellsporting.co.uk. And if you want to turn up with a pair of smart William Powell shotguns in the back of your car, prices start at £7,500 for a pair of side-by-sides or £4,500 for a pair of over-and-unders. For more information, go to williampowell.com. Now from open moorland to a closed mind, it's David on the Field Sports Channel News Stump. This is Field Sports Britain News. A wildlife charity is claiming that shooting magazines should join other kinds of magazines on the top shelf in newsagents. Animal Aid claims that lurid, pro-violence content of country sports magazines could have a corrosive, long-lasting effect on impressionable young minds. Professor Peter Squires of the University of Brighton goes on to say that magazines such as Shooting Times in the Field are a kind of shooting porn. He clearly doesn't realise that both shooting porn and traditional porn is now readily available on the internet. Apparently. The Paralympics are set to get underway. The shooters are competing from the 30th of August to the 6th of September. Great Britain's 12-person team includes Di Coates in her 8th Paralympic Games and the 2008 gold medalist Matt Skellen, who may also win a medal for his hair. Basque is hosting a number of events to help people improve their shooting skills. They're one-day courses with classroom and practical sessions with Basque staff and Basque accredited shotgun coaches. They cost £65 for a Basque member and £100 for non-members and are being held all over England and Wales. Visit basque.org.uk And finally, Essex was briefly excited over the weekend when there were reported sightings of a lion on the loose. However, police believe it's a domestic cat. You are now up to date with Field Sports Britain News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts. Next, it's all the fun of the fair, the Irish Game and Country Fair at Burcastle in County Offaly. Now here's how to turn terrier work into an Olympic sport for Rio 2016. It's the finals of the All-Ireland hole digging competition. Here's when I started the shows. The tire men always seemed to have very little to do after the you know after the initial show and the thing was over. So there's always plenty of banter around the rings as who can dig and who couldn't dig and we've had some varied comments over the, this competition. But one wee lad reckoned his father was digging like his granny and told him that was one of the ways he was spurring him on. And, yeah. it, all, it all comes down to digging terriers, so it does. And, 
uh, at all. That, the idea of the competition is, and coming into an All Ireland who is to promote it in a good light because on TV, as we all know, it's only ever promoted in a bad light. So it's it's our way of sort of saying, well, look, it's all a varied range of people, and it's all there's nothing wrong with it. So, you know, <laughs> so it is. Triumphed again. <laughs> two years in a row now. Two years in a row. <laughs> From spades to guns, you could hear the bangs of the shooting line during the hole digging. The clay shoot at the Burr Castle Game Fair is organised by the local pheasant shoot. We're the host uh, gamekeepers in the castle here in Boar, and uh, we're hosting this clay shoot on behalf of the great game fairs. So you're more used to real pigeons than clay pigeons? Oh yeah, well we're game shooters in, in, well, at heart. We're doing this, I suppose, to support our, our shooting. Um, we're predominantly pheasant shooters and, and duck shooters. Well, all, all forms of game, really. Burr Castle attracts standholders from all over Ireland. William Holmes runs his tackle and fishing business in Northern Ireland, where it has been a bumpy year for salmon. It's been very, very good up around Darien, though, up around uh, the County Derry and County Derry and Antrim. Uh, system, the band system. Yeah, with the foil system and the band system. There's been a few of them where there's been quite a few regulation changes this year where there's a few of our rivers are total catch and release. Uh, a lot of the rivers they've they've cut down in the numbers of fish that people can take. That's really a reaction to the numbers of rod caught salmon over the last few years. Uh, the ban system it's gone totally catch and release, so it has, and we saw the figures very much up. So everyone here is a hunter, shooter, fisher, in short, imbued with Irish spirit. Ireland is a paradise for field sports enthusiasts. But there is a threat on the horizon. Burr this year sees a call to action by a new pro hunting group supported by all the major Irish field sports organisations. RISE is the acronym for Rural Ireland Says Enough, which is a movement of uh, country sports organisations and indeed others country uh, organisations uh, who are concerned with how our way of life in the countryside is being pressurised and indeed even being regulated out of existence. And it's a common a popular uprising, if you like, of rural Ireland uh, in defence of its way of life. Senior government officials insist the bill is no threat to hunting in Ireland, but after the English experience, the locals here are taking no chances. There's a vast support which has been demonstrated today by the RISE campaign. The amount of feeling out there in the rural communities that they will not accept this change and people have to respect our livelihood and our heritage. It has been another great show organised by Great Game Fairs of Ireland. Philip Lawton is one of the organisers. Shooting, hunting, fishing, dog work, fly casting, giant you, telescopes, giant telescopes cannon, cannon reenactments, medieval nasty pieces going around butchering each other in the arena. Well, <laughs> at least we know blood spilt. Next, Realtree UK pro staffer Simon Barr is protecting his pheasants from foxes. The harvest just about over now and it's a critical time of year if you've got pheasants on a farm. The young naive foxes are still about and this will give us a perfect opportunity now the crops have come off to see if we can mop a few of them up before the pheasant shooting season starts proper. I'm out this evening with fox shooter Gary Tate. He's got a couple of new pieces of kit to see whether or not they're going to make any difference on the foxing that he normally does. This looks quite an interesting sort of contraption that you've got on top of the quad bike. What's going on here? What's it all about? Well, it's a, it's a shooting frame which I'm trying this year. Um, it's manufactured by k &A Services and uh, I'm giving it a go to see how I get on with it. I usually use a, just a front mount rest and throw myself over that. But uh, with this, the idea is that you can shoot all around um, it has a, a place to rest your rifle when you're not using that. It has a place to hang game on the back as well if you're out rabbiting. And for me, the, the, the uh, main advantage that I like is the fact that I've got somewhere to put my lamp when I'm not holding it and I'm not picking up foxes. So if I go on my own, this does give me the versatility to be able to shoot on my own and to mount the lamp whilst I'm taking the shot. So. What would you like me to do this evening, Gary? Well, tonight, Simon, I think what I'd like you to do is just watch and see how, how I go about doing it as if I was out on my own. And if we do find a fox, I get set up, you pass with the rifle, I'll take the shot. Hopefully, there's plenty out here. 
we should see some action very early on. Do you think I might get a chance at a fox? Oh, there could well be a chance of a fox <laughs> or two, I think, yeah. Excellent, excellent. Okay, well, why don't we get set up and um, make for some foxes? Good, let's go. Excellent. Tonight, we are lamping over two large areas of the same farm. Gary has already taken half a dozen foxes off this stubble, but he knows it promises more. There's even the chance of an urban fox from the local village. The quad bike is a great tool for this type of work and we cover a lot of ground scanning as we go for foxes and those deep ruts which would make my life on the back of the quad very uncomfortable. A couple of fields on and we get our first set of eyes. Gary barks to keep it interested and starts calling with the lamp off the target. I lower the light onto the sitting fox to fully illuminate it for Gary to see it through the scope and the fox instantaneously drops. Here it is again, right of frame. It's a great start. It's quite small in the body, isn't it? It is quite small in the body, but it, it, for me, it's a pleasing result because being a vixen, this is going to go on, this is going to produce more. It's the same philosophy I use, you know, and, and is used within the deer world. If you want to control deer numbers, you shoot females. You don't go shooting males. The same goes for foxes. It only takes one dog fox to cover a lot of females. So here we've got a vixen. She's going to. She's now out of the breeding program, and so we've got a job well done. And a very good shot, Gary. Thank you very much. Many fox shooters choose ballistic tip bullets when after Charlie's. Tonight, Gary is using 243 ammunition loaded by a friend of ours. He's using my new Blaza Professional Success with its ergonomically designed pistol grip stock. These are 70 grain ballistic tip home loaded rounds. The ballistic tip gives us a very, very fast expanding bullet, so what happens on impact is this polymer tip here is driven back into the bullet, forcing the bullet to rapidly expand and lose as much energy inside the animal as possible without penetrating through. We're not looking for a blood track. We're not looking for uh, you know, a, a, a bleeding hole. We're looking for an instantaneous dead animal. And, and this bullet will give you that. We cover acres of ground. Gary knows the lay of the land on this farm, so he could probably drive blindfolded, but it's sensible not to. The Badgers have dug some enormous sets, the perfect trap for a quad bike. We light up fox number two. Gary once again decisively finds the target. This time it's a youngster. What have you just managed to knock over there? It's another vixen, Simon. Um, which, I say, pleases me makes me. This is definitely a cub. Um, you can tell, very, very fluffy furry coat as opposed to hair, more fluff than hair. Definitely a cub, much, much smaller teeth look, almost pristine condition. And Gary, that ballistic tip's literally taken that fox apart, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Would, you know, it would have felt absolutely nothing, would it? No. Now it's my turn on the blazer, and I hope there are still some vulpine targets for me to have a shot at. On the next sweep, we find one. The quad multimate rest gives me a steady shot and I've comfortably accounted for another female. So what was that, about sort of 100 metres or so, Gary? It was about 100 metres away, mate. It was nicely shot, straight through the neck. Yeah, good shot. Clean kill. Another vixen, this time quite an older one. I would say very old, actually. Comparatively speaking tonight, I think most of the, everything we've seen tonight has been quite young, but this one, this one's quite old, so. Well, I'm very, very pleased with that. It's a good shot. First one of the evening. Yeah. I tell you what, the rest on the quad bike made a massive difference. Being, being able to rest my right elbow, yeah, it, get, does. I was, it was kind of bench rest conditions to be able to take that shot. It was yeah. excellent. It's, it's the reason why I put the rest on there was because I've always been able to rest as everyone can on the front of the bike, on a rest on the front of the bike, but you always find that you're, you're, if you're right-handed, your elbow's flapping around in the wind, and that's really what you're looking for is that sort of bench rest sort of setup where you're absolutely solid and then you know you're going to get a Yeah, I mean, shot. I felt very comfortable then when I took the yeah. shot. No, it was a good shot. Well done. Having covered every field on this side of the farm, we hitch up and head off to the other side, a couple of miles away. The pheasant release pens are located on this part of the farm, so it's crucial we eliminate as many foxes as possible. The first foxes we spot make for cover and will not stand. Gary thinks these animals know a little too much and have been lamped unsuccessfully before. We lift the lamp, hoping they might drop their guard, but to no avail. We drive through the cover crop and again spot a fox that knows the score. Eventually, we get a response that we all hope for. The fox stops long enough for me to shoot. Amazingly, the lamp's beam picks up the part of the bullet as it is sent across the field, which you can clearly see. It's a satisfyingly long walk to retrieve it. 
Gary reckons it's about 180 metres, which I'm very pleased with. It's a mature dog fox. Gary, thank you very much. It's been a brilliant evening. Four foxes, three vixens, and that last dog fox, which I'm particularly happy with. That was a very good fox. It was a very good <laughs> fox, yeah. 180 metres, yeah. nice and steady, and he dropped to the shot very, very beautifully. Yeah, good shot. Yeah, very pleased with that. So thank you very much. I've learned a huge amount this evening about um, the way that you fox, the techniques that you use. Yeah. There was a few that weren't standing this evening. Yeah, if they're not going to stand, leave them alone. Don't don't t start taking wild shots at them because you won't get another chance. Yeah, it's a delicate process, yeah. isn't it? And yeah. um, we left quite a lot this evening. Yeah. Are, you, are you happy with four? Yeah, very happy with it. Yeah, it was a good good evening. Um, taking out the vixens, I always you know I always think it's worthwhile. They're the breeding animals. So well, three to one ratio tonight. So yeah, that was good. But Gary, thank you very much. You're welcome. Well done. Foxing is such an important job. As a crafty predator, they can really impact a pheasant shoot. So accuracy and commitment are needed to outwit this most cunning of adversaries. It is a hugely satisfying task when it goes right and pleasing to know that many more birds will make it to the season. If you like this show, why not tune into Team Wild TV to see my buddy Ian Harford on his latest bow hunting adventure to Hungary where he takes a monster boar at eight yards. If you enjoy shooting, you'll love The Shooting Show. This week, it's a call to action for rimfire and air gun shooters. Episode 16 of The Shooting Show is a pest controlled bonanza. Byron Pace makes it a family matter as his brother Daryl joins him to deal with rabbits on a new shooting ground in the Angus Glens. South of the border, Byron is joined by sporting rifle writer Tony Megson for air gun pest control on a Yorkshire farm, curbing the population of pigeons that roost in the barn and contaminate the feed. There's another big bag to be had here, provided the pair can avoid angering the resident pigs. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can click on the screen behind me to go straight through to the shooting show. Next, it's Hunting YouTube. This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting, shooting and fishing videos that YouTube has to offer. We start with Mark Gilchrist hanging out with a beautiful girl. Star of the Scandinavian hunting world, Christopher Clausen joins Mark for a day's pigeon and, crucially, he brings Christina Tebow Hansen. Christopher promises an action-packed episode, not that kind of action. We make films for Guns on Pegs, but occasionally they get hold of their own cameras, and here they are with a pair of the new iCam glasses, which puts the camera right between your eyes, which makes for good filming when you are doing the same with shot at pigeons. Love the old-fashioned Hessian pigeon hide. They should get that listed. The Arab Spring saw North Africa join up on YouTube en masse, and some of them are hunters. Here is M. Naya from Tunisia showing off his HPR and catching birds with it. Might not be your bag, but shows what the world is up to. It's open to argument, but not with me. Top of the saltwater fly fishing world is Permit, and here is addictive fishing spinning for them. Spinning, dim me. Give him both barrels, will you, James? But you do get to see plenty of fish in this film made off Boca Grande, Florida. The new motto for kinetic fishing is shut up and fish. Cannibals on the hunt big perch fishing in midwater is a romp set to rock and roll through catching five big perch from 1.2 kilograms to 1.6 kilograms. That's three to three and a half pounds somewhere in Scandinavia. They shut up and they fish. Roebuck hunting in Scotland is the kind of holiday video anyone would be pleased to show. OK, it's a bit wobbly, but it's a great showcase for a Czech stalker's trip to Britain's last great wilderness. Bad news for Visit Scotland, he chooses the theme tune to The Last of the Mohicans as his soundtrack. Now for some good old American know-how. The National Shooting Sports Federation offers its definitive guide to shooting off anything but prone with former Army Ranger sniper team leader Ryan Kleckner. If you are American, watch and learn from Shooting Positions in the Field NSSF Shooting Sports Cast. If you are from anywhere else, you will probably find something wrong with it, but that's nationalism for you. Now it's hard to find anything wrong with Doug and Regis Giles. They are on a wild boar hunt in Florida. These guys' homespun enthusiasm is a big part of the American YouTube hunting scene. Doug runs ClashDaily.com, Regis runs GirlsJustWannaHaveGuns.com and she is using a double rifle in 9.3x74 with some success on a piney wood router. You can click on any of these films to watch them. If you have a YouTube film you would like us to pop into the weekly top 8, send it in via YouTube or email me the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. 
Well, if you're watching this on YouTube, please hit our subscribe button that's somewhere around the outside of the screen there, or go to our show page, www.youtube.com slash show slash Field Sports Britain, where you can subscribe to just this show, which is out every Wednesday from seven o'clock, or go to our website, fieldsportschannel.tv, scroll down to the bottom, you can pop your email into the constant contact box there, and we'll get in touch with you, or you can click to like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter. This has been Field Sports Britain from County Offaly, the Burr Castle Game Fair.